Hello! In this video, I would like to talk about the concept of probability as your degree of belief. To understand what I mean by this, consider this example. Suppose you want to start a business and you are interested in knowing the probability that your business is successful, supposing we have a precise definition for success. So what kind of probability can be assigned here? This doesn't seem to fit any of the interpretations of probability that we have discussed so far. It doesn't fit relative frequency, which is repeating an experiment many times in order to obtain an accurate probability. You could not start 1,000 businesses in the same way you could flip a coin a thousand times and observe the results. Even if you could, it would not be the same exact experiment each time. For example, as you start more businesses, you would probably become more skilled and experienced, so the probability of success would continually increase. And this is why the concept of the relative frequency is not very useful here. Another approach to probabilities we have discussed is the concept of equally likely outcomes, such as in a coin toss. If you are starting a business, you have two possible outcomes, success and failure, but they are not necessarily equally likely. Depending on the circumstances, the probability of success could be much higher or much lower than the probability of failure. Therefore, it becomes clear that these types of scenarios fit neither the concept of relative frequency nor the concept of equally likely outcomes. In fact, many real-life situations fall under this category. Let's look at a different example. Say you are a juror in a murder trial and you want to determine the probability that the defendant is guilty based on the evidence you hear. At the end of the trial, you might say, OK, I'm 95% sure this person is guilty, right? But what does this probability actually mean? Again, you cannot interpret it in terms of relative frequency or equally likely outcomes. Rather, this is what we call your degree of belief. So my point here is that for a scenario like this, we can still assign a probability. For example, if you are 100% sure the person is not guilty, then the probability of them being guilty is zero, and the probability of them being innocent is one. If you are pretty sure they are guilty, the probability is closer to 1, and if you are more confident the person is innocent, the probability will be closer to 0. Now, in this case, the probability could be subjective. Two different jurors could have different probabilities, and that's perfectly okay. There are a couple of important points I want to make here. First, although this is a legitimate way of assigning probabilities in certain situations, we cannot just forget about the laws of probability. We will talk about this much more carefully later, I will talk about specific trials as examples wherein jurors made mistakes in their probabilistic thinking and the outcome of the trial was not satisfactory. Let's go back to the business startup example for a second. In order to calculate a more accurate probability of success, there are statistics you could start using here. For example, again assuming you have a precise definition of success, you could look at the success rate of startups in the United States if that is where you're located. For example, you might see that the probability for success on average for a startup is 5%, which could be your starting point in assessing your probability of success. Now, of course, your startup could be very different, but as you find more evidence and information, you can continually update this probability. Later on, we'll talk about specifically how to do such things. This updating of probabilities based on conditional probabilities, in fact, is the Bayesian way of thinking about probabilities. So the point here is that just because probabilities in these situations are subjective and rely on your degree of belief, you should not just intuitively assign random probabilities based solely on such intuitions. You should also be careful about the laws of probability. The second important point is that in many important scenarios in life, we cannot estimate probabilities accurately. In other words, you could have some opinion, but there could be a lot of uncertainty involved. In those kinds of scenarios, Again, there are still strategies you could use to produce a positive result, such as the concept of anti-fragility, which is a very interesting concept introduced by Nassim Taleb. We will not discuss this in depth until later, but for a quick explanation, in those scenarios, we would look at the possible outcomes and potential dangers, as well as the strategies and plans that might help us, even in scenarios where we cannot assign probabilities accurately. Thank you for watching.